All right. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to Friday Morning Conversations. I just want to make a brief announcement before I uh, reintroduce my guest and before we get into this show today. Um, just real quickly, we are soon to launch um, World Bible School University online. We have students already that are fully enrolled and others that are trying to get enrolled. And Dr. Fay is working on those applications and processing them. Uh, we appreciate all of you so much. So uh, go to wbsitc.org. Uh, that's World Bible School University International Training Center, WBS itc.org and click on the page three buttons down wbs university the information's right there the link to the applications right there for you to download and fill out and how to get it to us uh so how to send your your fees and so on very affordable very minimal charges so do that today get started at least get your application going so we can know where you qualify and our instructors are waiting to teach you so welcome to the show today everybody's uh, good to see pastor kyle jumping in here god bless you my brother uh and um uh, dr fay in here and others that will be joining us um today uh pastor roy Sinegrand is back with me how you doing my brother i am blessed and highly favored i'm so glad to be here what a privilege yeah i mean i'll tell you what it's good for brethren to dwell together in unity. The Bible said in, in uh, uh, Psalm um, uh, 122, uh, man, I, my mind just went somewhere. Uh, <laughs> anyways, verse three, the only three verses in that chapter, and it says, for there, God has commanded his blessing to be forevermore. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're talking about identification. Now, a lot of people approach this subject in um, uh, various ways, but what we're discussing is our identity in Christ. Honestly, it's from God's perspective, the Father's perspective, because if you try to identify uh, as far as being in this life, whether you understand the concept of being a spirit being in, in that made from, from the Father before the foundations of the world, or whether you only identify with your human existence, here's the fact that if you identify, connect with, become unified with anything other than what God says about you, then you uh, develop a false identity. You develop a false concept of yourself. So last time we looked at 2 Corinthians 5, 17, just to mention it briefly. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, we're looking at kind of the in Christ factor, if I could say it that way. He is a new creation. Uh, some of the old translations says a new creature. We're not a new creature. We are a new creation uh, confirmed again and again in the word of God. Uh, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, before we get to Romans 8, Pastor, uh, here's something interesting that uh, just, just hit me. Uh, when we think about old things have passed away and all things have become new, it's not that I don't have old memories or I don't have uh, things that happened in an old life, uh, you know, depending on how old you are. Uh, you know, the fact is, is that all of the old Adamic nature, all of the old covenant mindset has been replaced by the new Adam, the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, who brought us a new mindset, which the scriptures call the mind of Christ. And so everything we do has to be wrapped around the identity of in Christ. And these two words, in Christ, appears about 75 times in the King James Version of the Bible. So, uh, you know, to understand that we are in Christ would mean that we are no longer the same as we were before. I don't have any old mindsets. I don't have any old garbage. Even though stuff tries to linger, we're not paying attention. And as you and I were talking before the show, it's not about what I'm experiencing or what my circumstances might be uh, because all of that stuff changes. All of that, none of that came to stay. It all is just passing through. But the fact is we are no longer the same because of our in Christ identity. So take us from there, pastor, and just uh, uh, bring this in and we'll move on to Romans 8 from there. Amen. Well, and what, what we need to realize is uh, the scripture verse that Paul ministered to the Thessalonica church. And that was in first Thessalonians chapter five, verse 23, I believe it is. He says that I pray your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice in that scripture verse, he starts out with spirit first. 
uh, that we are a three part being, but our real, uh, who we are, um, the reality of who we really are starts out with the core of who we are. And that is we are spirit beings. Uh, yes. God is a spirit. We saw that last week and that he created us in his image and in his likeness. So if God is a spirit, then that makes you and I a spirit. Amen. And um, if God is eternal, then we are eternal. So we're going to live forever, whether, uh, you know, we're, we're together with with him or we're separated from him. We're going to be living forever because we're made in his image and his likeness. Now, the issue is this, is that Adam uh, sinned and, and uh, Adam was a spirit living in this body. And he had a mind, will and emotions. He had thoughts. He had feelings. Um, but that wasn't who he is. He is a spirit. And when Adam sinned, uh, he was bound in a prison and every man born after him in Adam. The Bible clearly states that in Adam all die, meaning all are spiritually separated from our father. And that's not the way you and I were created to live. And so, as you said, uh, Jesus became the last Adam and another spirit was born into this world. But this spirit, Jesus, well, he was sin free. He was not in bondage and he never sinned until. And then on, on the day that he was made sin on the cross, he was made sin with our sin, not his sin, our sin, so that we could be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And here's the thing. If we go over to Ephesians chapter one, yes, when we go on down to verse um, four. I like this. Uh, this is made very clear, uh, clear. In, uh, well, let's start with verse three. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath. In the King James Version, it says hath. That means has or past tense. This is something that has already taken place. Blessed us, here it is, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So number one, God has already done a work through Jesus where he has already blessed us. We don't need to ask God for his blessing. If you've accepted Jesus Christ and you are a born again child of God, you are a new creation, a brand new spirit child of God. As uh, we quoted from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, God has already given you his blessing. And notice Dr. Billet says all spiritual blessings. There's not one spiritual blessing that we need to yet uh, attain or get God has freely given his blessing, his love, his empowerment to us. Now in verse four, it says, according as he has chosen us in him. Now look at that before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Right. Even before the foundations of the world, before you were even born into this natural reality, you were already chosen in him, in him yeah. to be blessed with every spiritual blessing. You were chosen. You were valued. You were highly sought after. You were accepted. You were loved. Hallelujah. Before you even yeah. were born. Glory to God. And when and you know you you mentioned that Jesus was sinless. Jesus came into this world um, as a child, and as he grew up, even during his earthly ministry, there was sin in the world because of Adam. And I love Hebrews four fifteen that says, "For we do not have a high priest which cannot sympathize or relate to or understand our weaknesses." Uh, weaknesses also can be translated inabilities, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Amen. So the sinless one had to, uh, the, the, from the, what we see in the tabernacle of the old covenant uh, about how they brought the, the spotless lamb to the priest and the, the sins of the man were transferred to the, to the lamb uh, through the priest, the, the sins of uh, the goodness and wholeness and cleanness and pureness of the lamb was transferred to the man. That's what they did repeatedly. But the sinless lamb of God came, sinless lamb of God. He became the sacrifice and they sacrificed those lambs of the Old Testament and did a whole bunch of rituals with them. But Jesus became the sinless sacrifice, the lamb of God and took care of the sin problem but uh, you still need to choose what route you will go with him. So we have a high priest and thank God for this high priest. Um, 
you know, when we talk about in Christ, uh, I, I personally believe that uh, Christ sacrificed himself. Father God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. And now redemption has been paid for. Redemption has been purchased. You have redemption. And if I today, uh, if I believed I was not only talking to Christians, but I was talking to someone who really didn't get this identity concept, I would say to you that you have been redeemed. Now it's kind of like the ball's in your court. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to embrace Jesus? Because I think for all of us, you know, the journey that I'm on, Pastor, uh, when, when we talk about the appearing of Christ, and we're not talking about that today, but but I, I believe in multiple appearings. What I mean is that every time I get a revelation, Christ becomes clearer to me. And, um, you know, when we talk about attaining that heavenly gift, uh, we're really talking about that Christ is the heavenly gift. We have... Uh, attained him but it's not because we apprehend it's because he apprehended us so uh you know it's like a a man and a woman chasing after each other before marriage they're courting they're flirting you know don't be so hard to get okay <laughs> god's flirting with you don't be so hard to get just just embrace what he has done for you so what a powerful concept that christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. The word places actually isn't in the original. And it says that we've been blessed uh, in the heavenly Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Amen. Christ. Amen. Yeah. And notice what we're seeing here, what we're focusing on is something that has already taken place. That's it says it. that he has blessed us uh, in the, and, and, you know, we were talking about the redemption of Christ and, and, yes. You know, a famous scripture verse that a lot of us Christians have heard over the years is Galatians 3.13. And in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, again, we read this, that Christ, here it is again, hath redeemed us from uh, the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Notice it says that Christ hath redeemed us. Now that word redeem there means to purchase or to buy, but it also has the emphasis of buying out and away from. So when Christ was offered himself on the cross and he died and he shed his blood, that shedding of blood was not only for the remission of our sins, but to literally purchase or buy us back from Satan and from the dominion of darkness, if you would, from being lost. We were lost in sin. We were born into a prison. And God so highly valued you and I that Christ redeemed you with his own blood. This is something that, you know, uh, Dr. Bill and I were talking before we got on today that, that has already taken place. He's already purchased you and I. And uh, so at this point, there's nothing more that you and I need to do except one thing, except the gift of life. We've been purchased out and away from death. And we've been brought over as Colossians chapter one, verse 12, 13 and 14. So eloquently says that we should give thanks to the father who has delivered us. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the control and dominion of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I remember the first time I was preaching that uh, in uh, Austin, Minnesota, and I was ministering that, that we've already been delivered. We, we have already been translated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We're in his kingdom now. Christ has already redeemed us, Thank purchased God. us, bought us out and away from. Uh, the kingdom of darkness <laughs> as I was ministering that some of the looks on the folks in the congregation that day, they were all confused. Like, what do you mean? We're already in the kingdom. I'm saying, yes, that is the truth. Now, the only responsibility is, are you going to believe it? Will you accept the purchased gift of salvation? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, what a message 
uh, that Jesus came preaching and proclaiming, uh, that the apostles continued to, to proclaim. Here we have an old covenant people. We have people who were schooled in the law from, a, uh, from their childhood, not only 10, but 613 laws. And they, they would write them on huge slates uh, as they would enter into the camp and the priest would proclaim these, it would stand and proclaim all of these laws. People were so law stricken that they couldn't see past that. That was the fault. That was the, the, the downfall of, of many who were really trying to reach out to the love of a heavenly father, but kept getting tripped up by the law. And here this new high priest comes, they wouldn't accept him because uh, Joseph was, he said that Joseph was not his biological father, that the Holy Spirit was his father, that Mary was uh, conceived by the Holy Spirit supernaturally. None of this made sense. Yet he comes pronouncing that he is the Messiah. And so the Jews were looking for a Messiah that had, they had a, a list of, of, of things that the Messiah would be able to do, but they could, and Jesus did all of those things, except they couldn't get past the idea of this supernatural conception that took place and, and, and Holy Spirit impregnating his mother, Mary. They couldn't get past that. Yeah. Well, that's just it. That's what the law, unfortunately, the law, you know, could not produce life. It just revealed sin and people became a sin consciousness and they, they just didn't have the concept of, of the spiritual, like you said, supernatural, but the spiritual birth of Christ, the spiritual realities of who we are, that we are a spirit, just like our father, father God is a spirit. That's who we are. And that's, they were, the law tend, tended to make people too carnally minded. And the Bible makes it very clear that if you're carnally minded, that's death. And that's what the law ended up producing. It was, it became an oppression. It became, um, you know, uh, something that, that, you know, I know that Paul even tried to address this, uh, you know, when the law came, sin revived and mm -hmm. the, that, that's why Christ had to come. And that's why faith uh, that we're saved by grace through faith, faith believes the grace, the grace, you know, what is the grace, the grace of God is the actual work of what Jesus did by, by living and then becoming sin with our sin, by becoming the sacrifice and, uh, and making us got the righteousness of God, putting us yeah. back in right standing with God, yeah, separate and, from and, the law. And that's a perfect example or explanation of, of uh, redemption. Um, and reconciliation, we have been made right again. Now, I, I wanted to just just take a, a short side note, and it really goes with what we're saying, being created a spirit being. Uh, you know, when we talk about spirit being, Paul says that, uh, that do you, do, uh, don't you know that, uh, that the Holy Spirit lives in you? Um, and I know he words that different a little bit better, but uh, the word spirit, uh, is interesting. Whether it's talking about God as a spirit or we as a spirit being is the same Greek word, and it's the Greek word pneuma. Now, the problem with all of these words, when we, since we, we're not, uh, our our uh, birth is not Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic or Chaldean, uh, we, uh, Chaldean, we don't know those languages. We can study, we can learn, we can be taught, but, uh, but not being an authority on the language, what I have to rely on is uh, my study helps. Now, here's the thing about it. The word spirit, pneuma, it, it has a few different definitions. So what it does is it really, how you choose what goes where is look at the context of the passage that you're looking at. Context will t and, and audience relevance will tell you everything. But here's one of the things about spirit. Uh, words, the word spirit, uh, a spirit, i.e. or in essence, human rational soul. Now, the human rational soul, the, the, we call it the heart, uh, cardia, um, the, the mind, will, intellect, and emotions, from the Latin, C-O-R, the core or center of your being. In other words, this is really the heart of who you are. So you have a mindset, and that's one of the things that Jesus was doing when Jesus came to preach. He was changing the way people believe. Metanoia, change the way you think. Embrace a new idea. And he was preaching the good news. So I just thought I would mention that, that, that we uh, have a mindset 
And in our mindset, we can choose to embrace the faith of God, the faith of Jesus that Paul said he lived by. You read that earlier. Or we can choose to embrace uh, a legalistic mindset. But whatever mindset you have, just remember this. It forms an identity. And the identity is what you will cling to. So I hear this all the time, Pastor. I'm sure you do, too. I'm broke. I'm poor. Uh, my country is poor. I'll never be anything more. Everybody's poor around me. Everybody's sick. Nothing's ever going to work. That's an identity you've clung to. So you need to change your identity. And if your identity is, you know, years ago, I said this to the Lord. Okay, Lord, I don't get it all, but whatever you're doing, that's what I'm doing. So just show me. So I begin to form an identity that says, whatever I hear Jesus saying, that's what I'm embracing. And I think that's a very important thing that people do embrace your god identity what does he say about you amen Amen. i you know back when my uh, early 20s when i rededicated my life to christ right around 20 21 years old um i uh, began attending a church in brooklyn park minnesota living word christian center and and was introduced to brother hagan and one of the things that uh, brother kenneth hagan who now is with the lord in glory hallelujah um you know, began that I that I began to hear from the first time in my Christian life because I was, uh, you know, I was raised in a Christian family, was in Him realities and who you are in Christ, and that 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 phrase in Him reality. And as I grew in the Lord and began to understand, as you were uh, speaking about, like the, the 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 different emphasis that the Scripture gives to spirit soul body or even this word heart like in hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it says for the word of god is alive and powerful oh, yes. and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even dividing asunder the soul and spirit so there we see soul which is suke spirit which is pneuma okay so we have two different words right there emphasizing two different uh parts of your being soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Now there's heart, that's the Greek word kardeia. Obviously that's uh, what you were referring to, the soul, the core part of your soul, the middle yeah. part of your soul. Hallelujah, that also, that's the place where your thoughts begin. So having said that, uh, we need in our heart, and as as we begin to form these beliefs where our, our, our thoughts begin, that's where we need to start thinking and believing in line with the truth. Jesus said, it it is as you continue in my word that you'll be my disciples indeed, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Something happens when you continue in his word. You begin to find truths, and as you believe and think those truths in your heart, now watch this, that becomes your reality. The Bible says uh, in the Old Testament, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when we begin talking about, you know, uh, who we are in Christ or identifying, you know, identifying with the truth, identifying that we are God's child. But not only that, we are a brand new creation. Mm -hmm. If we've accepted Jesus Christ, we are we are one spirit with the Lord right now. Uh, as I was ministering to the youth the other night, I said, whatever Jesus is, if you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, his mm-hmm. spirit now has created in you a new spirit, right. Right. a brand new spirit that's one with him. So whatever Jesus is, that's who you are now. If you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, if you're if you've been born again, you know, Jesus said in John three, three, three through uh, five, uh, you must be born again. Right. Yeah. But that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Well, that's just flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And so when you begin to understand that you've been born again with the spirit of Jesus and you begin to believe that and think that, well, as you think in your heart, that becomes your reality. And so what do you say? 75 times we see yeah. the phrase in Christ in the King James Version. Right. That's referring to who you are now. That is your, that's the true reality. But your, your reality will never experience the truth until you begin to hear it, uh, believe it, and then begin thinking it and acting on it. Uh, you literally will change your reality as you begin to identify with who you really are in yeah. Christ instead of identifying 
uh, with the course of this world, which is in the really a death flow. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know, last night I had a broadcast and the whole thing was about what the term born again meant in the Jewish culture and uh, very, very powerful, very good. Uh, we, we need to understand that. Now, Pastor, uh, let's transition, if we can, to Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. Um, this is such uh, a powerful thing because, you know, a lot of people, and, and I, I, I don't like the, the phrase, the term world, uh, I don't like to, to imply that I'm excluding anybody. Everybody, this is for everybody. Um, but we think sometimes, and I've seen people do this, that think that God is mad at them because of the way they've lived. Uh, God is God doesn't want anything to do with them, that all hope is gone. I've heard that. There's no hope for me anymore. Uh, but here's some scriptures that would imply a, a complete difference because really what we're talking about is is not theological positions per se but what is the heart of the father what is god actually saying to people is god pushing you away is god trying to embrace you what is he doing and i think that's so important this says for i am now paul's talking he says for i am persuaded i'm convinced this guy that just comes in the book of acts just has an encounter with jesus and all of a sudden now he's saying, look, to all these Jewish converts in Rome, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able or has the ability to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's awesome. Amen. See, the love of God is where it's in Christ Jesus. And if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're a new creation now. And again, what did he say? Uh, you are in Christ when you're a new creation. So if I'm in Christ, I'm in I'm where the love of God is. I'm in the love of God and nothing can ever separate you from his love. Nothing, nothing, because it's now one with you. His love is one with you. Hallelujah. Because his yeah. love was in Christ where you have been made a brand new creation. I like I like that a lot better than creature. Dr. Bill, I'm right there with you because creature kind of has a weird interpretation here in our culture. But creation, you're a new person. You are a person, a child of God, where the love of God has now been shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost. And that's, that's what... We need to grab a hold of nothing. Nothing can separate you from his love. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nothing can. His, he has such a passionate love for us. He values you. That's that's the other thing that we talked about last week was, you know, the lack of validation, not understanding how important we are to yeah. him. Yeah. And uh, we are so important that it took the blood of Jesus to rescue us. And right. now that we have been purchased and, and as soon as I accept that gift and and accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, well, now I'm I'm this new creation in Christ Jesus where his love is now one with me. You know, one of the things that I ask people is according to 1 John 4, 18, it says that God is love. So if God is love and you're made in his image and his likeness and you're a brand new creation in Christ Jesus where his love is, what does that make you now? You are his love. That's who you really are. And now if that's who you are, his love can never be taken away from you. That's powerful. And you just said something like, um, uh, like uh, you, you know, I, sometimes I miss a comment because I'm operating this system and checking people's comments and things. But you said something like that. We're we're now one with the Father's love. Now Amen. think about that. We're we're not talking about your position today or your mindset so much. We're talking about the Father's mindset. Here's what He says about you. Here's what He's made available to you. So the reality is that you need to agree with, because really that's what, when we talk about faith, I, I have my own personal belief about faith. I know there's been tons of teachings on it. over the four, last 46 and a half years, I've done tons of teaching on faith. And, and the thing is that, that I believe that faith, Paul said it best, that we live by the faith of the son of God. So it's his faith that's in us. Romans 12, three also verifies that. But 
Uh, I have a belief system. I get to believe what I want to believe, and I choose to believe, or in other words, identify with what God says. So if God says through the words of the apostle Paul that nothing shall be able to separate us from the love which is of love of God which is in Christ, then you know, here's what I see about that. There's a lot of controversy in the New Covenant letters and epistles about things like fallen from grace and what that means in the Greek language. It means to a first century uh, believer. But um, we, we fully understand that the cross and Christ's finished work was for all mankind. He did not exclude anyone. So don't exclude yourself today. Don't disqualify yourself today. Enter into that which has been provided for you. And verse 39 from the Passion Translation says, there is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Hallelujah. See, wow. so it's coming down to understanding this this real, this truth, understanding this is a uh, reality that is true and that is eternal. You know, there is such a thing as absolute truth. You know, in our culture, we have relative truth. What true sure. for you may not be true for me. No, that's not, that's not reality. There is an absolute truth and his name is God, the father, yud heh vav -Heh, amen. And is manifested through Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the truth. But the thing that we need to, you know, when we, when we start talking about identification is that we, we, let's bring it home now. Let's bring it home now. Um, you said something that is true, and that is in Romans chapter 10, verse 10, it says, for what the heart man believes. You see, what you believe becomes your reality. Now, you can believe uh, things that you, uh, you know, however you interpret life, you can believe other thoughts, other words. But you see, when you believe in God, what God has said, when you believe what he says about who you are and, and how valuable you are and, and that, you know, you hear things like you're one with the love of God. It can never be separated because it's who you are now. You, it can never, you can never be separated from his love. You can't, it's just, it's impossible. Um, you have a choice to, to start believing that. And the Bible says, if you do believe that that's faith, faith, you know, you can't have faith unless you're simply believing what God says. And that's what your heart does. It begins to believe. And this is the victory that overcomes the world and when we say the world when the bible talks about the world it's just talking about another way of thinking and believing and acting that's that's all that means and so again we see what paul says here in galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 he said i am crucified with christ yes nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. And that's where I would say the rubber hits the road right there, Dr. Bill. And that is we have this opportunity to understand this truth that, that when my flesh has temptations, I don't have to identify with, well, this is, I, I want such and such. You know, if I have a temptation uh, to commit for uh, fornication or adultery or to steal or to lie, I don't have to identify that I want to lie or that I want to steal. Uh, that's no. not me. That's the old man. That's that's the, the thing that has passed away. I don't have, even though I'm being tempted by it, I don't have to take possession of that feeling, of that thought. Instead, I, I need to believe that I have been crucified with Christ, just like Christ crucified uh, was crucified on that cross with my sin. There, there it is right there. What is sin? Sin is thinking and believing and feeling anything other than what it, what God said. Come That's all now. it is. That's all Come it is. Now. So I, I am crucified with Christ so that when that temptation comes, I need to disassociate myself from it and say, That's not me. That's not me, even though it's a strong emotional feeling. There's an emotion behind it. There's a, there's a desire behind it. And it just seems like this is what you want to do. You want to get angry. You want to uh, be offended. You want to put somebody in their place. You want to get in their face and start pointing their finger and, and whatnot. And, and we have to, you know, uh, you know, there it is. You're at night guys and, or ladies and you, and, and you're all alone. And then there, there comes the temptation, the desire to, to look at pornography. Is that you? Is that you? Or, 
are you a child of God? And notice what Paul said. He goes, I am crucified with Christ. That's a good confession to start making. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Brother Hagen was saying is that when you start to confess these things, Jesus Christ is the high priest over your profession. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll make sure every word you speak comes to pass. And so you, you can start saying, this is a good confession. I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by mm -hmm. faith. You see, uh, he went on to say in, in Corinthians, when he was writing to the Corinthian church, he says that we do not walk, we don't, we, we walk by, uh, we don't live by sight, but we walk by faith. You know, we don't, we don't determine how we're going to live by what we're seeing and interpreting. We live by what the word of God says, by the faith of God. And when you choose to believe in your heart now that who yeah. you are in Christ, hallelujah, that is what becomes your reality. You begin walking free from those cigarettes. You begin walking free from that tobacco and that alcohol. You begin walking free from the drugs uh, and, and the addictive life and the abuse, you, you know, you, because you choose to believe that you you are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. And that's where you have to determine that your old self is dead and that you are a new person. And yeah. that, that and when you start re relating to people and ministering to people who they really are in Christ, you start seeing sickness just fall off of them right and left. You start seeing the addictions fall off of them. I mean, we have people that are just uh, walking in, in, in newness of life here. We, we've had people walk away from four stage cervical cancer. We've had people walk away from being, uh, having diabetes and asthma. And I mean, you know, they were, they were living in pain, nonstop pain and the pain is gone. They had hearing aids uh, to help them hear and their hearing aids are gone because they, they have no need for it. They can hear clearly. And we've seen people walk away from all forms of sickness and disease and, and oppression. You know, when you have people coming out of wheelchairs, uh, and they're walking around town when they were in a, a an electric wheelchair to get around town. I mean, that that starts glorifying God because that's who they really are. They are healed through the stripes of Jesus. And when they choose to believe that, well, that's when they begin to experience it. Now, now you know, Pastor, um, we we are 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 close on our theological position about things we are. We, we see a lot of things the same. I don't think we see that much different, but here's my point. What I like about you, you hear a lot of people that talk about um, salvation in in a, a, a traditional way. Uh, and I say traditional and an old time legalistic fashion, but, but you talk about salvation. First time I ever heard you say anything about salvation, you talked about that you you gave a date and it was speaking to someone and that was the date they perceived they received Jesus or they had an encounter with Jesus. But you told them that that actually they were saved or salvation came to them 2000 years ago. They're more, more or less, but they acknowledged it at a particular date. I don't know the date. Uh, for me, I know that the, at the cross, Jesus done something phenomenal and somehow it reached me. I got it. I, I don't know what day I was nine years old. First time I received Jesus and I made an adult profession as uh, later on. The point is, I don't know when that was. But what I do remember is what happened when, at the cross when Jesus died, was buried and resurrected. And that newness of life became available for me. So I thank God for this great thing that he has done for us. Paul said it was so powerful. Let me read that for our, our audience from the Passion Translation, uh, Galatians 2.20. My old identity. You see, we, we, we can have an old identity, but that's what we're talking about. Shedding that old identity and embracing a new identity. Paul says my old identity has been co crucified with Messiah and no longer lives. What no longer lives? My old identity no longer lives. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the son of God who loves me so much 
that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into mine. You know, when we talk about, if you've seen the movie Back to the Future uh, and, and the, the flux capacitor there, and I see all this that flows in this, this electrical lights and things. I, I see the, the life of Christ continually uh, di being dispensed into our life. He, he has dispensed his life he spent his life. He sacrificed his life so that I could live through him. What a powerful truth that we can live in union with the creator of all things. There it is right there. In union. You, are, you and I have become one. We're no longer separate. We are now one uh, in Christ Jesus with the Lord. One spirit with the Lord. Glory to God. And that empowers us. That empowers us. And I think that's what the passion said, empowers us with our new identity of who we, who we really are. Now to, to, to talk about that, the man that, you know, the people that I've ministered to and especially specifically that one person, you know, I asked yeah. a lot of times I'll ask people, when did you get saved? And most of the time they go back to their point of where they prayed a prayer of salvation. Some of us like uh, I grew up in a Christian home. I don't remember the point that I was born again, if you would. Um, I do remember uh, around 10 years old going to a Bible, Methodist Bible camp, and they have called it Wednesday night, cry night. And I really believe that would be the moment in my life where I, where I fully accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, even though I grew up going to church, hearing about Jesus my whole life. But did I get saved at that moment, well, I accepted my salvation, but that's Come not when now. we were saved. We were saved as we, you know, you heard Dr. Bill say over 2000 years ago, and it goes right back to the second Corinthians chapter five, verse 18, which says, and all things are of God. Now watch this. Here it is talking about past tense, the finished work of Christ mm. who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So reconcile means being brought back. So yeah. all of humanity has been brought back. Every one of us. Think about it. We're right here next to the father. Uh, but we have to choose to accept that. And then it says in verse 19 to wit or to know mm -hmm. that God was in Christ. Here it is reconciling the world uh, back to himself. Not, I love this, not, imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Praise God. He's not holding the sin against us because of what Jesus did. You see, Jesus is the one that saved you. Your prayer at the altar or on the street or in your room, in your house somewhere, your prayer of, of, of confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is not you getting saved. It's yeah. you doing exactly what Paul did on the road to, to Damascus. As soon as Jesus appeared to him, he just said, Lord, what do you want? Where, what do you want me to do? That was his prayer. That's when he was born again. That's when he accepted the truth, the reality that Jesus died to reconcile, to redeem him and brought him back to the father. He's in right relationship with him. And so are you and I. We we have been reconciled. Now we have the opportunity just to receive this reconciliation, to receive our salvation in our heart. The uh, Mirror Bible, uh, verse 19, says, Our ministry declares that Jesus did not act independently of his Father. God was present in Christ when he reconciled the total cosmos, that's the Greek word for world there, cosmos to himself. Deity and humanity embraced in him. In him, the fallen state of man was deleted. Their trespasses would no longer count against them. He now announces his friendship with every individual from within us. Amen. Amen. Now, now, you know, Pastor, in John 15, Jesus says that you're no longer my servants, but you're my friends. But you know what he says after the resurrection, when he's meeting the, the, the ladies on the road there, he says, go tell my brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Identity. Identity, brothers, right there, identity, amen. See, so there, there it is again. Notice he says that God doesn't hold our sin against us. He doesn't impute, impute that sin mm -hmm. against you. I like it what uh, the, even the prophet Isaiah, the Lord was revealing even way back in the old covenant. 
I'm not, I'm not holding my, your, for, for my sake, I'm blotting out your transgressions for my sake, because I love you. I'm not even going to look at it because he was saying there uh, through the prophet that the sin was frust there. The people's sin was frustrating him. So he goes, for my sake, I'm going to blot out your transgression. I'm going to blot out your iniquities. I'm not going to remember your transgressions anymore. And that's bait. And that is exactly what he's saying right here through Jesus Christ. He's not, he's no longer holding your sin against you. So here's, here's the thing. He sees you, especially if you've accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, he sees you perfect. You see, now here's where you and I have to choose to identify with that. When you see yourself doing the thing you don't want to do, as Paul said in Romans chapter seven, you must understand it's not you. Yeah, it's not you. He goes, I, Paul said, I, I see it's not me, but sin that dwells in me is trying to kill me. It's trying to hold me in bondage. See, when you choose, listen, that's when the rubber hits the road right there, Dr. Bill. What happens when someone misses it? They're saying, what happens when I, when I miss it? What, what, what happens when I, when I act out on something that I'm not? You see, the truth is that you're pure. The truth is that you're holy. The truth is that you are love. You are, you are made in the image and likeness of God. You are the righteousness of God. What happens when I, when I, when I act unrighteously? What happens? That's when you have to choose in your heart to still believe in, in what Jesus has done. Has his blood been shed? for your sin has he paid the price for that sin are you still the righteousness of god in christ jesus you know the lord was talking to me about that he says you know no matter how bad it is it cannot get to who you really are it may affect your body it may affect your soul it may affect your mind but your spirit hallelujah is made in his image yeah. and his likeness it's one with god and yeah. sin does not have dominion over God. Therefore, sin shall not have dominion over you. Glory to God. Yeah. Why? Because we're not under the law. We're not under that law anymore, are we? Yeah. We're under grace. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. See, see that that's the whole thing with, with Adam. Uh, I, I want to move on, but man, this is good. Uh, Adam uh, spoke out of his soul out of his identity uh, in a fallen state in his thinking and he said i hid myself because i was naked but notice that god's identity god's perception did not change when he said who told you you were naked come on i didn't tell you that that's right uh, and so when we blow it and you know because sin really does mean to miss the mark uh to, to error it has several applications but but when we blow it what happens is, is we can sit there and wallow in that and say, look, I messed up. I'm bad. I'm no good. God cannot possibly love me anymore. And God say, who told you I didn't love you? And, and our perception, our identity out of our soul begins to speak to us. But you're right, Pastor, as a spirit being, we are established in who we are. God's nature. The Bible says that we have his nature in us. Uh, and, and so that nature still speaks and says, you're still my child. I still love you. I still sent my son to die for you and and uh, and so on. And that's what I like about, we talked about before the show, Ephesians 1, 7, in him. Now, when you read in him in scripture, a couple of points before we finish this, I'd like to bring out in him also means in Christ, if it's talking about Jesus, uh, number one. And number two, think about the city of Ephesus. Now, Paul is writing a letter. Okay, Paul did make a, a journey to all of these places. When we look at the book of Revelation, we see the seven churches of Asia. Uh, basically, those were seven churches Paul visited, Paul established uh, there. And so now he writes letters and and these and even the uh, who was it? Um, um, I can't remember if it was the, the letter of, of Ephesians or Galatians where he says uh, to to tell this also in Laodicea, which what he was telling them to share was the things about the book of Revelation. But here's my point, that in these places, history tells us that Paul's not only speaking to just the believers that he has established there, even the expansion of the ministry of producing others who believe, but also there's others who are really not believers that are hearing these words. And here's the message. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood. 
That's important through his blood. You can't get redemption any other way through his blood. His blood has redeemed mankind from um, from their past. Again, it's important for mankind to acknowledge that or embrace that. We have the forgiveness of sins according to the riches, or I like to say richness of his grace. So all that we received came in Christ when his blood was, was shed. That really validates what you said earlier that you know, as we talked about over 2,000 years ago, that's when salvation was purchased. That's when it was given to mankind. Now here's mankind. It, again, God's saying, it's in your court. Okay. Um, yeah. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. Yeah. There's an inheritance that you can receive by faith, knowing that that he has redeemed us, that he has rescued you. And so it comes down to exactly what you just said. What are we, what are we going to do with it? And that's where... We have to start focusing in on some of these scriptures. I, I, you know, one of the greatest things that helped my walk as a as a born again child of God was begin to start reading through the epistles. You know, one of the things that I I, I like to tell and and I encourage people all the time is to read the Gospel of John because John's Gospel was so different from the other Gospels. Absolutely, because he emphasized the Father Son relationship. Jesus is quoted for saying. Uh, in the, the gospel of John, that it's the father in me. He does the works and he, you know, he dwelt in the bosom of the father and declared him. And, and you begin to understand this father son relationship. But as you spend, if you're going to spend time in the scriptures, which I, obviously I highly encourage you to do, mm -hmm. you're, I want, I want to encourage you to start looking for phrases like in Christ or in him oh, yeah. or in whom, like we just read in whom, uh, in verse seven there, um, where it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, mm -hmm. even the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. As you begin time, spend time studying these scriptures and looking, you begin to see the, the, the picture or the mirror, if you would, of who you really are. Yes. You know, what James talks about, um, you know, there, when you start looking into the perfect law of liberty, it's the mirror Come of God's on. word. You start to see your true reflection. You start to, number one, see who your father is, and then you start to see who Jesus is. Now, listen, this is going to shake some of you up, but when you start seeing who father is and you start seeing who wow. Jesus is, you start seeing who you really are. Think about it. Think about it. Because you are. God's child. You are the, you are part of his family. Jesus is our Lord. He is our savior, but he's also our brother. Just like he said, he said, go tell the brethren. He said in the Lord's prayer, when the disciples ask him how to pray, he said, say our father, look at that. Dr. Bill, our father, not my father, but our father referring to the family. Come on. So when you God. start seeing who God is, when you start seeing who your father is, and when your heart starts understanding that he is your real father, that's where you came from. Yeah. You will know where you're going. Now, if you, you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. <laughs> and uh, that's when you start seeing who you are because you are everything yeah. that he is. You are everything that Jesus is. And that's yeah. what God wants you to know. And you're everything that he says you are. Amen. Now, yeah. Now, uh, the you know, since I study translations, I, I love translations. I love the, the Greek and Hebrew, and I look for, look for things where they've translated um, as accurately as they possibly can. And I, and, and I, I shared this with you, I don't know, months ago. Uh, I had found the Passion Translation. In my, my uh, online, on Google Chrome, uh, I pulled up BibleGateway.com, and I pulled up the translation I like. But... Um, the, the thing is, is one day, uh, the, a new translation appeared. Now that happens every now and then. And there's the passion translation. And I thought, how weird is that? Why do we need another translation? And I began to read and I found out that the, the heart of the, the, the translator or the author was to get as close to the original language as possible. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying we won't find fallacies in the Passion Translation, but Ephesians 1, 7 says, since we are now joined to Christ. Okay, joined to Christ. There's there your position, is. okay? We have, positive present tense, been given the treasures of redemption by mm -hmm. his blood. Then he begins to name them. 
the total cancellation of our sins, all because of the cascading riches of his grace. Hallelujah. That's good. <laughs> That's his grace right there. Yes. You know, as we begin to close on this, look at what it says here. It says, in, in, in Ephesians, we'll just stay right there in Ephesians chapter one. And it says that in Ephesians chapter one, and I'm just going to start reading this in verse 17, which we kind of looked at before, but it says that uh, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So number one, God wants you to know him. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know him. And when you begin knowing him, the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened that you would know what is the hope of the his calling. You, every one Go of his on. children are called. You are called to freedom. I wrote an article uh, a while ago that heaven is calling you. <laughs> All of heaven, the Father is calling you to freedom. God, the Father is calling you. You have a call. Amen. And what is the riches of the glory of the his inheritance in the saints, well, you have an inheritance. Yeah. The father has an inheritance. An inheritance is for a family member. So there's an inheritance for you. And that you would know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards you who believe. Now, this is according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Now, watch this. And set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named. Now, we say that Jesus has been given a name above every name. He, uh, he, he, he has been raised up far above and given a name above every name. Glory to God. That's powerful. Amen. So there's nothing that, that, that uh, is stronger than him. There's nothing greater than him. There's nothing. That, I mean, cancer is a name. And it's under the name of Jesus. Now, this is, yeah. people, we started understanding that this is where Jesus is. He's been raised up above it all. He's been made, uh, and it says here that uh, he was raised up to the heavenly place in Christ. That at, his, at the Father's own right hand. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. He's right there at the right hand side of God the Father. And it says that he is in verse 20. It says, and put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Now, here it is, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. And he goes right into Ephesians chapter 2 after showing us where Jesus is in right relationship with the Father, at the right-hand side of God the Father, and has been given a name above every name. Here we go, Dr. Mm -hmm. Bill. And it says, now he says, and you, mm -hmm. have he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And he says, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world their way of thinking and believing according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience among whom also we had our conversation or lifestyle and time past in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath here's the thing we were listening to the temptations of our flesh we are identifying with the temptations yeah. of our flesh this is what because I feel it, because I think it, this is what I really want. No, but he says, but God who is rich in his mercy for his great love wherewith he loved you. Yes, mm -hmm. God loves you. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter how bad it, in sin you've been lost. Even when you were dead in sins has made us alive. Here it is, Dr. Bill, together with Christ. Now, where is Christ? He's been raised up. He's at the right-hand side of God the Father, and he's yeah. been given a name above every name. Yeah. Now you have been raised up together with Christ. You know what that tells me? That you and I have a name now, come on, above every name in Christ Jesus. He says, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That yeah. is who it's not a legal, it is a legal position, but more importantly, Dr. Bill, it is who you and I are now. Yeah. You know, um, there was a there was a man that came. We had a down we had a downtown outreach center for for several years in Austin, Minnesota. I, I loved when I first came to Austin, I said, give me the give me, I want to go right straight to the core, gut, belly, 
of the city where all the bars were and you know there's we 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 opened up an outreach center right there i mean just two doors down was a bar where there was prostitution going on i mean you name it drug deals going on we would have saturday night revival services and we had folks just just loving god and just praising God and the Holy Spirit was moving and we would have people that are going to that bar walking by checking what's going on and there's a few of them even drunk came into that place it was awesome but uh, yeah. you know there was a time when um, I was in there and, and uh, getting prepared you know we had some folks in there and we were preparing to, for some prayer ministry and uh, there was a commotion on the outside on the sidewalk and the Lord led me to go out there and he said now Roy just he goes don't say a word just just go out there there's a young boy that's in trouble and I said, okay. And uh, as I approached the door, I saw this man that was being very belligerent. He not didn't. He was not in his right mind. You know, obviously there was uh, some oppression of darkness going on in him. There was, it was very demonic. And yeah. I, as I stood out there, I looked at the young boy, and I just, I just motioned him to go upstairs because uh, he lived in the apartments above our outreach center. And that man turned to me and boy, he was going to tear into me. But I had this, I had this understanding that I was in Christ Jesus. And what kept rising up in me was I am in right standing with God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm in the secret place of the most high. I'm under the shadow of the almighty. I'm his child. And really in the natural, this man was he could have taken me. I mean, physically, if we got an altercation, I'm not going to I'm not going to try to puff myself up in any way, shape or form. But I just stood there. And the miracle of this thing was, is I just looked right at him with the love of God. And uh, this man uh, just began to try to attack me and he reared back and he tried to throw a fist at me. And when he went to go throw that fist, the Lord literally moved him back. He took a step forward forward, but he was moved back. And the man got real confused. And I just stood there just looking at right at him, just looking mm -hmm. at him with all the love that I had, knowing that I was in the heavenly place. Come on. And then he started cussing and swearing and raising his ugly voice. And he was going to do it again. Took another step at me and he got pushed back even further. Well, he was real frustrated at that point. So he walked across the street <laughs> and he gets all the way across the street and he's on the sidewalk over there. And then he decided he was going to charge me one more time. And as he took a step, the Lord pushed him all the way across the sidewalk on that side. And he just mm. threw his hands down. I'll always remember that. Turned away and just walked away. And I stood there till he walked out of the sight. And that young boy was rescued from whatever that man was going to try to do with him. But I'm telling you something. When you know who you are in Christ, hell itself can overpower you. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Your faith determines your reality. You got to know who you are. You've got to know your identity. You've got to know what Father God says about you because it will it will give you confidence, give you boldness. Um, it, it'll just change everything. It'll change your whole perception about life. People today seem to hate life. But I want to tell you, we're living in the greatest time. We're living in a wonderful time, not because of any uh, uh, chronological time period, but because we understand that Christ lives in us. We identify with him. We see what the Father says about us, and we embrace that, and it Hallelujah. changes your whole perception. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Pastor Roy, uh, we have uh, talked about a few scriptures. We didn't really cover a, a whole lot of scriptures, but we'll come back to those next time and, um, um, you know, see where Holy Spirit does this in our conclusion next week in part three. Um, such a powerful uh, concept to know that because we're in Christ, everything that Christ has has been transferred to us. Uh, all of heaven has moved its position so to speak in that everything god has released in christ has been released to us we're joint heirs with christ co-heirs with christ equal heirs with christ uh, as the scripture would translate and we're heirs of our father and you know he brought us out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son so that we can think like he thinks and live like he thinks and 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 just have an identity a, a god identity uh, you know, Tommy Tenney, and I, I didn't really read the book, maybe some of the book God wrote about God chasers. And, you know, the, the truth is, is that uh, w while we thought we were chasing God, 
God was pursuing us. That he had pursued us in the cross the whole time. That was his yes. purpose to pursue yes. humankind. So praise the Lord. Good broadcast today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I agree. Woo. Hall Amen. Amen. I'm ready to go Amen. do some prayer ministry now. <laughs> <Glory to God. laughs> so we're going to come back next week and we're going to, to talk more about identification and uh, just share some scriptures with you and bless you because um you know that's what this whole thing is about iron sharpens iron uh mm -hmm. somewhat uh, you know iron the purpose of iron the definition is to make one better than they were before and so we're we're rubbing on each other and we're rubbing on the scriptures rubbing shoulders with jesus and uh -huh. all of you that are watching are are hopefully getting a hold of this and saying you know what i gotta change the way i've been thinking about myself Amen. 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 You are God's dearly beloved one. Amen. That's good. That's good. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor, for being on with me today. And um, we'll do this again next week. That sounds great. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for watching today. If you would, please like and share so that others can benefit from the words that we've shared today. Uh, God bless you so much, everyone, for being on. Praise the Lord. We'll see you next time. This is our last show for the week, unless I do some impromptu broadcasts. But uh, we'll see you next week, uh, Tuesday, um, on Healed Because God Said So, Wednesday. Take another look, for the book of Revelation, verse by verse. Uh, Thursday. Uh, Pastor Michael Porter is going to be on with me. It's going to be a, a great broadcast. Uh, and then next Friday back with Pastor Rory. So we'll see everybody then. Have a great day. Or if it's night, uh, morning in your a uh, night in your country, have a great evening and a great night. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.